It is time for Grand Final Day 2019. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Campbelltown Stadium. The second division, Southern Highland Shield Grand Final is about to get underway between the Warragamba Wombats and the Barrel Blues. Good afternoon, Mike Sheen and Craig Davis with you for the Grand Final weekend of 2019. Two down, two to go. Indeed. And well, for got... today anyway, not um, the weekend. We've still got four more matches tomorrow, but for today, two down. The two second division matches to follow. As we get ready for kickoff in the second division, Southern Highland Shield, we can see the Norellan girls celebrating. If you've just joined us, Norellan defeated Campbelltown City 20 nil in the league tag one, in the league tag two, Picton 10, the Oaks 4. We'll go through the teams in a moment. We can see the Norellan girls down on the touchline celebrating with their uh, their premiership medals and trophies and the like. And just about ready for the first grade uh, for the uh, senior grades to get underway. There's the kickoff now. Warragamba running left to right on your radio in the opening 35 minutes. The Blues defending the league's club end of the ground in the first half as they come out of their own end, just short of the 20 on the first tackle. Strong. They played a very strong um, major semi-final both sides, didn't they? They close. did. It, it was went, down, went down to the wire. It was only a couple of points in Warrior it. Warragamba 34-30 were the winners in that major semi-final two weeks ago. Uh, Barrel getting home last week in a tight one in the second division, in the preliminary final rather. Uh, from memory, I think it was 20 points to 18 in favour of the Blues over Thirlme. So we are underway. First set of the match, playing 35 minutes each way in these games here at Campbelltown Stadium oh, this our, afternoon. Our favourite Group 6 referees out there today. Mr Glenn Whiteman. Mr Whiteman. He's left the um, seeing eye dog off the field today. Oh, well, that's an improvement. At least he's got it. Has, has he got his cane with him? He's got his dark glasses on. No. Oh, right. I thought he might have had his, uh, his cane with him to, to assist while he was on the field. But I do see an oxygen mask on the sideline in case he um, <laughs> gets shortness of breath. I was going to say hyperventilates. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we, we, we are having fun when we make these comments about no, Glenn's the been officials. around the, Glenn's been around the group six competition for, for quite some time yeah, a very long time I, I, I still remember the year when they had um, they were asking for referee of the year and, and the clubs had to vote on the referee of the year and Glenn ran around paying all the officials five dollars <laughs> each so they could vote so for, they'd vote, so for, they'd for, vote him. for him <laughs> and he ended up winning the group six referee of the year that year as well so must have cost him a lot of money I to was going to say I hope he got a little bit back out of that he does like a punt as well Mr Whiteman I think he bet. I think um, the odds were that he was ten to one to win it. So um, he, he, he made sure it was a dollar ten. Sure he wanted to short, He wanted to keep the odds out there and then put some money on himself. He, he got a dollar ten when it was ten to one. As we see the Blues coming out of their own end, they're running right to left. These jerseys don't clash, Mike. The, 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 no, certainly the, no issue with these. These teams because uh, the Warragamba ones, uh, even though they are blue, they. They've got a lot of white they're in them. The, they're the real sky blue with the white and barrel wearing the traditional two blues. I'm surprised they haven't turned the lights on here as yet um, because the next game's going to... I think they have. They're just slowly... Uh, yeah, slowly... It from where, I'm, where I, can, I can't see them being on, but then again, the sun might be shining on them. It could be a reflection, so... Yeah, so we're... we're uh... Oh, that was a dud pass from Dummy Arthur. Yeah, that's Mark well. Williams picking it up in the eight. Well okay. picked up. The captain coach of the Blues. He had a long way to go down to pick their ball up too. He's a, quite a tall player. Now they come to the left-hand side. Barrel on halfway. Ball's been stripped out. Referee's going no, to blow the in, penalty. Yeah, two in the tackle. Yeah, that was an easy decision for Glenn Whiteman. Didn't need his seeing eye dog on that occasion to to rule that one. Now we're on the sideline up in the sky box and um, we <coughs> can see it from where we were. So um, if we can see it, I'm sure Glenn was able to pick it up quite easily. Yes, he would have found that without any trouble. As we see the kick find touch on the western side of the ground, about 28 metres out from the line. And we had, well, we had nearly four minutes in the grand final. No score, Blues and Bats. Been 35 years 
since Barrel last won a first grade grand final. I would dare say it's been a good 30 odd years since they've been in a grand final. They lost the 88 decider in first grade and I suspect they haven't been in one since. Did they have their playmaker taken out like the like in the, 88, like in the, <laughs> the NRL grand 88 grand final? The NRL, uh, the New South Wales Rugby League. Back then it would have been, yeah. Yes, uh, New South Wales Rugby League, Canterbury and Balmain that day. The infamous hit from Terry. Special call out to Terry Lamb. Yes. Listening. <laughs> the King of Chester Hill. <clears throat> Excuse me. Barrel going to take the two points here. Todd Fairburn has a penalty kick from about 20 metres out. There's a name that um, is synonymous to rugby league in the Highlands, isn't it? Fairburn. Yes, well, there was... Um, oh, goodness, I've just gone blank. Can't think of the name. There was a younger Fairburn playing for uh, Mittagong. Yeah. Uh, his name just escapes me at the moment. Uh, was it Matt? Well, I can't remember, but I, fair, I just broke my brain the, a couple of years ago. Yeah, the Fairburn name is synonymous <laughs> with football in the Highlands. It certainly is. Todd lines up the shot at goal. Flags are raised. Barrel leads the grand final 2 0. We've had five minutes in the first half. Considering the major semi was only there was only four points between, I think that was a good idea then from. Uh, Barrel to take that shot for goal. That puts him in, in front from the start. And the batters have to um, chase. Even have though it's only two points, they're still behind. <clears throat> That's right. Five and a half minutes in. In this Shield grand final. Special call out to our constabulary this afternoon. The Campbelltown Police are down here in front of us. Um, oh, yes, watching, they are. Watching... Um, the crowd, but also watching um, the watching rugby league. Good quality rugby league as we see the Blues over the 20 from the kickoff. They come back to the left hand side. It looks like the lock forward Ash Carlon. 28 metres out, centre field. Running right to left on your radio in the first half. There's Williams in the distinctive dark blue headgear. Looking for a penalty, 12 short of halfway. Doesn't get it from Whiteman on this occasion. Now Carl on again. Five short of halfway. Fairburn on the left. Punches it downfield. <coughs> Taken by Dave Wallace at the back. The rangy number 14 playing fullback this afternoon. For the Wombats. Only got a, looks like a four or five man bench here. The, the, uh, the Wombats while Bowrell have got a, a full quota of seven available. That was like the major semi-final, wasn't it? Um, uh, yeah, Barrel, Barrel only had a... I think they had 14 or 15. There's a knock-on from Warwick Gamba. Yeah, they only had a short bench that day. And both, <coughs> sides, both sides were short of numbers that day. But this afternoon, Barrel must have got their players back from injury. And um, but Warwick Gamba's got what, one, two, three. They've got five on the bench. Certainly not uh, capacity numbers, but uh, a healthy squad nonetheless. As we see the scrum 40 metres out, just inside the 40, western side of the ground. Shadows, the part of the ground that is uh, being shielded by the grandstand is completely in shadow. <coughs> Pardon me, this time tomorrow we'll almost be awarding the Norman L Day Cup for first grade. Will it be Thurl Miral Picton taking home the trophy? It'll head south to the Wallandilly, but... There's only seven kilometres separating them. Which side of the road will it be on? It'll it, be a draw, extra time, golden point. <laughs> <laughs> that's how even that's how even the two sides are in this competition. I'm glad you've made that comment, Craig Davis, because I've been uh, ridiculed by certain sections of the black and white army uh, for the fact I can't call this grand final. I think it's too tight. Yeah, I Williams. can't. That's what I'm saying. I think it's going to go to... Um... Oh, there's a knock-on from Warwick Gamba. It's been a double knock-on from Warwick Gamba. Barrel gets a scrum feed 10 metres out, 20 metres in western side. Yeah, they're on the attack. The Blues are starting to look pretty <coughs> good, um, Barrel, at this stage. They've look. got Warwick Gamba's look, looking a little bit rattled. They certainly do look a little bit under pressure here, the Wombats. Probably slight favourites going into this game, the Wombats. But uh, not to be... The no, Blues. at the moment they've started off very nervous, haven't they? Been very tentative, the uh, the Wombats. As we see the scrum fed and won by the 
by the Blues. They work it to the right-hand side now. Looking for a way through this. Uh, looking for the way through here. Having some questions why this game's not being live-streamed. There are issues uh, with the live-streaming this afternoon. So the only place you can hear Group 6 Rugby League this afternoon and quite possibly tomorrow as well is here at Group 6 League Live. MacArthurSportsRadio.com bringing you the action. I'm Mike Sheen. That's Greg Davis. As we see the Wombats driven back. We should mention the Kip McGrath, Norellan and Campbelltown scoreboard. Reading 2-0 in favour of Norellan. In favour of Bowrell, rather. We've got a penalty to Warwick Gamba for a push. Yeah, the Bowrell um, marker pushed the Warwick Gamba player out of the way so that his player could crash over for a try. But referee Whiteman was right on the spot awarding the penalty to um, the Wombats. And the penalty count for Oz Skilled, your local RPL specialist. If you're looking to get qualified by using your previous and current work experience, visit ozskilled.com.au for more information. Mention MacArthur Sports Radio for a 15% discount on your next qualification. I can confirm they will be back in 2020 on MacArthur Sports Radio and Group 6 League Live. If you'd like to join them and join us, then get in touch with us via social media. Group 6 League Live and MacArthur Sports Radio on Facebook and MacArthurSportsRadio.com. The MacArthur's sports leader. Warwick Gamber about to get another penalty for inside the 10. Yeah, you need to get behind these sponsors. If you, if you, um, For us to continue broadcasting these matches, we need these sponsors to, to help us continue. So please, everybody out there, get behind our sponsors and support them. Kip McGrath does a wonderful job in the community for the children of the MacArthur region. Yes, if you've got the Naplan results and they weren't what you were hoping for, then uh, get in touch with Kip McGrath, Norellan and Campbelltown. Also our Around the Ground sponsor in 2019, Forte Financial Services. For, 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 for Forte Financials. You'll spit it out. And we go. We check our stats for Ausskilled, your local RPL specialist. Warwick Amber, they're on the attack, 35 metres out from the line. Working to our right in the first half. There's a nice ball for Craddock. Crush Craddock gets the ball back on the inside, sits up for Dave Wallace on the bounce. He wheels around into centre field. A little bit flat here, the Wombats. That's a good run there from Mitchell Horn, the lock forward. Got it away to Jack Partington with the bleach blonde locks this afternoon. As the sun sets behind us in the west, he'll play it in the sunlight. 15 metres out, that's tackle four. Up the middle goes uh, Stephen Blair. Good run from Blair up the middle inside the 10. He's only two metres out on the last tackle. Let's see what Presdy does with this one. I'm sure the ball's going to go back to Nathan Presdy. If they can if clear they can the ruck. Get... Oh, penalty. They get the penalty. Obviously, the barrel player not rolling away to the liking of referee Whiteman. Penalty count three all for Oz Skilled. You don't need that, that late in the tackle count, that close to your try line. Now the question comes for Bat for no, Warwick Gambit. No, Warwick Gambit's taken the tap. They're I thought gonna, they would have taken the two to um, level it up. But, I was um, going to pose that question as we see Warwick Gambit within half a metre. Great run there from Bo Skibberis. Back through the hands now. They take on the line. Warwick Gambit very close. Did he get there? Yes, he did. There's the opening try of grand final day. James Murphy. In for the batters. They lead it 4-2. Kick to come. Well, they That's know, for Kip McGrath, Norellan and Campbelltown. They definitely know better than us. We would have taken the two. So good good on them for scoring the try there. And we've had, I think we're about eight or nine minutes into the grand final here at Campbelltown Stadium this afternoon. Let's wait for the scoreboard to light up for us and tell us how far into the game we are. But the Wombats have the opener through... James Murphy, and it's 4-2 in favour of Warwick Gamba. I know they're having a few issues with that uh, temporary scoreboard in the northeastern corner, in front of the Athletic Centre. So, wait for the uh, conversion attempt, but they lead it 4-2. Warwick Gamba kick from in front to make it 6-2. It looks like it'll be, uh, I think it's Partington taking the shot at goal. They have to do something with these scoreboards out here because, um, you know, the West Tigers playing three or four of their matches 
And you need the um, scoreboard there for the um, crowd, where it is situated now. It's good for the Group 6 Grand Final because we're only on one side of the field. But if it stays where it is... I'm sure that's a, only a temporary uh, solution. Uh, I still remember being here for the very first game of the West Tigers and the Brisbane Broncos and the scoreboard lasted five minutes and then it broke down. You used to be in that corner there, uh, the club side, the club end of the ground. Yeah, in front of the old... Uh, in front of the old uh, Car or in front of the car park where it used to be, where the car park is. But I can tell you it is 6-2. The conversion was successful from Jake Smith. In fact, it was Mitchell Horn getting the try for Warwick Gamber, and that was 13 minutes in. So we've had 14 minutes in the first half, and Warwick Gamber leads it six points to two for Kip McGrath, Norellan, and Campbelltown. And the, the Wombats now looking to capitalise. There we go. We've got the uh, scoreboard back up and running. Nearly 15 gone in the first half. We'll go around the grounds for Forte Financial in the NRL during the evening. First up, it's Melbourne and Canberra from Amy Park. Then the Steve Rogers Cup, Manly and Cronulla from, from Brookvale tonight. Lotto Land, Michael. We have to call it by its correct name now. Lotto Land. Here at Campbelltown Stadium. They haven't changed the name of that one in a while. You know, they're looking for corporate uh, involvement here at Campbelltown Stadium. But that's what it is for now. And I don't think they get enough games played out here for any corporate. Well, I know with the uh, take over. with the round ball game coming here, they they're certainly looking at uh, uh, there'll be twelve or thirteen games a year. Yeah, so that'll um that'll boost the number of matches. Give some give the people <coughs> of Macarthur something to come and cheer for. Yes, that'll be in the off season, or in the off season of rugby league anyway. As we see the uh, the Wombats now in defence. Barrel pushing forward. 15 short of halfway. That's a good short ball from Fairburn to the outside. And uh, the Wombats now kick on the last. That trusty left foot. That'll sit over the top. A little, nice little box kick into the corner. Dave Wallace takes it for... The Wombats they lead it by four midway through the first half. The lights definitely taking effect here at Campbelltown Stadium. This is funny, they've actually got an interchange official for this, making sure the players run on the field when they're supposed to, nope. even though they haven't got cards to hand over for numbers of interchange, but they've got somebody controlling how the interchange operates. Yes, I want to make sure they don't gain an advantage or... Uh, get extra I'll come players. on in the field in the offside position. And yeah. Things like that, yeah. Those sort of situations as we see Warwick Gamba pushing up field. That's a good run there from the second rower, Rahaley. In the 11. Five inside. Barrel territory. There's the kick from Presti. A spiral torpedo bomb. They let that bounce. Probably a good option. Todd Fairburn ends up with it. He was 10 metres in front of his... Teammate, but it bounced the right way and fell into his arms. Ten short of halfway on the eastern side of the ground. The way he positioned himself, he thought, that's coming back to me, I'll just wait here for it. I'll just camp here and take it. Midway through the first half, Warragamba six, barrel two for Kip McGrath, Norellan and Campbelltown. Great to have you along for Grand Final Day 2019, part one. You can read our previews. Big hit there. Great hit there. Over the top was Prisdy and Crash Craddock. But the referees found a knock-on from the Wombats. Uh, from the Blues, rather. I think it was Carter Reeves, the young Actually, fullback. He called a forward pass then, Mike. Ah, forward pass, yeah, was he it? Yeah, okay. he said it was forward, yeah. I, I thought it was a knock-on, but then I saw the referee's um, arm movement notifying of a um, notifying the crowd of it being a forward pass. Okay, so the scrum, 38 metres out. 17 minutes remaining, first half. Warragam is six, barrel two. As we bring you Grand Final Day, Part 1. All our previews on MacArthurSportsRadio.com. Read up on uh, all eight matches we've had two so far. This is number three. Another four tomorrow, plus one more to come tonight after this one. As we see the, the Wombats on the attack. Inside the 40, 35 metres out, 10 in. Eastern side, Pembroke Road, side of the ground. They come back to the right-hand side. There's the second rower in uh, Murphy taking it forward. Plays it on the 30. Back to the 
Right hand side inside ball from Presdy was a nice, nice one. Found uh, Skibberis in the 16. And penalty for not rolling away, according to referee Whiteman. Has had whistle out so far, seven penalties in about uh, 20 minutes. Yeah, there's been lack of discipline from the Bowerill side doing down down there. When uh, Mittagong, sorry, when Warwick Amber are making their breaks, they're slow to recover, so they're laying on the play, laying on the player before he can get up to play the ball, and they're, they're just laying there a little bit too long. I'm just looking here to see what uh, Warrigam is going to do. They're going to take the tap, give it to Mer Mitchell Horn, the try scorer. They Takes it to them. 10 metres out. They fancied themselves here to score. I think they think the Blues are on the ropes. On the ropes here. Presti to the left hand side, found Rahaley. Rahaley to within seven metres. No one at dummy half. Smith got there eventually, swung the ball out the back. Found a man in the form of the number 20, and that was uh, Reed. Reed plays it now through the hands. Presti to the left hand side. Partington has support out wide. Wallace coming in from fullback. There's Shane Matthews getting it on to Bryce Lowther in the southeastern corner. Only two metres out from the line. Back it comes. Partington has a look, takes on the line, nearly gets the ball away. Does he? He reaches out and scores. James Partington. Jack Partington is in for the Wombats. They have two. It's 10-2, Warragamba. 14.40 left, first half. As we said, when, uh, when they got their penalty, they fancied themselves for scoring a try, and they tried it down the right-hand side, couldn't quite get across, so they swung it to the left. And it was good work by um, young Jack Partington to cut back in and score. So it's 10 points to two, Warragamba in front of Barrel in the grand final of 2019. One more to come after this tonight, Norellan and... Campbelltown City in the second division decider. That's at 6.30 tonight. And then tomorrow we've got four more kicking off at 10.15. Dave McDonald will bring you the Women's Rugby League and the under-18s. And then at 3.15 tomorrow, the Norman L. Day Cup. Thirlmere and Picton for the first grade premiership title. And you'll hear it all on MacArthurSportsRadio.com. Big weekend of rugby league to cap off the 2019 season. Now the conversion attempt from Smith. 22 out, 10 in, punched it, punched it over. It's 12-2, Warragamba. And we've had about 22 minutes in the first half. The two tries that Warragamba have scored have both been because of penalties given away by um, Barrel in their own 20-metre um, line. They're going to have to tighten up their defence and um, fix up their discipline, otherwise this game's going to get away from them. That's Craig Davis for Forte Financial Services. I'm Mike Sheen. This is Grand Final Day, Group 6 League Live, MacArthurSportsRadio.com. As the Blues... Get us underway once again. <laughs> Almost had a, a visit from our president, Graham Andrews. Just uh, take, needs to take the third door on the left, not the second, Graham. Nice, nice to have you in here, but you're, you're after the door to the next one along. <coughs> Excuse me. There's uh, Head taking it forward. Jared Head for the Wombats. Outside the 30. Presty turns it on the inside for Bo Skibberis. He beats the first. Can he beat the second? No. Pulled down eight short of halfway. Just to the right of centre field. About 23 in from touch. Lights uh, certainly taking effect here at Campbelltown Stadium. Still a bit of natural light around, but a fair portion of the ground in shadow now. Warwick Amber on the halfway line. 20 in eastern side. There's Matthews taking it forward. Gains another six or seven metres on the last. Smith with the kick out of dummy half. Sends it across field and that will find touch two metres out. They allowed that to bounce the uh, barrel side. That was Caleb McIntosh on the wing there. Letting that one bounce and was happy to watch that over the sideline for the scrum feed. I think Warragama got a bit lucky with that kick then. A couple of metres further and would have gone touching goal and um, the Blues would have got uh, the ball back on the 25, yeah, the 25 metre, the seven, um, seven tackle set. So instead, they get it 10 out, 20 in. In the southwestern corner of the ground, the southwestern side of the ground. 
as they pack the scrum. I don't think the uh, lock had his head in the scrum there. Jake, uh, sorry, uh, Sam Moore for Warrigan, for Barrel. So they'll feed it again. The Blues. It's a slog at feeding the scrum in 19. <coughs> Pardon me, the voice. Been a long season of rugby league. Try and nurse it through for another 24 hours. There's a good run from Isaac Naya. There's a familiar name to uh, to rugby league in the Highlands, the Nyers, with Jake, a very handy footballer. As we see Sage, I think that is taking it forward. In the 18, it is Fet Sage. Plays it 12 short of halfway. There's Williams up the middle. Takes it to four metres short of halfway. And he gets the penalty as well. Not rolling away, so penalty count for all for Oz Skilled. The local RPL specialist. Ten minutes left, first half. Warwick Amber leads it 12-2. Kick finds touch 30 metres out on the eastern side. Let's see what the Blues can um, put up in this set of six. Williams from the tap says, get out of the way, I'm coming through. That was a strong run by Williams. That was a great run, 19 metres out. That's a poor ball, Fairburn. Did he hold it? No. no. Referee says he didn't. That was a shocking pass from Dummy Half then. That was a howler from, from Dummy Half. And the scrum feed will go to Warragamba. 20 metres out and just inside the 20 metre line. On the eastern side, the Pembroke Road side of the ground. That's sort of summed up Barrel's effort in the first time. Um, Part of this match is um, they've had some good spots and then they've thrown some poor passes. They have struggled at times with the uh, with the handling at times. has been an issue for them, but uh, they're certainly working to uh, resolve those issues in the second half. Now Warragamba 30 metres out, they come to the right hand side, there's Nathan Presti finding some open space, puts the ears back to young number seven, pulled down 32 metres out, five in on the western side, looking for a quick play of the ball, eventually comes to uh, the 14 there for Warragamba and Wallace, they eventually put it through the hands for Skibberis, in fact that's not him, that's uh, Stephen Blair on the 20, and the referee says there's been a knock on, from Jake Smith at dummy half. He's trying to milk a penalty, I think, by throwing it into the player or doing something with the player on the ground. But uh, Glenn Whiteman wasn't buying it. No, certainly not. He said you were trying to milk the penalty and drop the ball. Yep, didn't fall for it. So the... Uh... World game is on the attack. It'll be on the attack now. The scrum packing down on the 20-metre mark. I know there are people asking why isn't this game being live streamed. We've got issues with the live stream. That's why they're not. Um, the play's held up for a minute, Mike, as they, okay. um, but there's a barrel player in the background being uh, seen to by uh, the trainers and the referee's gone over there to check on his welfare. Okay, so we've got a bit of a breather. The clock's been stopped at 8.08. 8.08 remaining in the first half. That'll uh, address that little issue for the uh, for those who were wondering. There have been some issues with the live stream. Uh, they'll be hopefully rectified. Uh, I think that message might have got through. So uh, hopefully they'll have those issues resolved for tomorrow. Yeah, it had a lot to do with the music when there's breaks in play and tries are being scored. At the ground, they're playing music, which has been interfering with the uh, live stream. So that's why we've had to uh, cut it short, not use it. Well, and to be fair, that's not the uh, uh, that has not that is beyond our control. Yes, there's nothing we can do about that. Uh, we simply do the uh, the audio broadcasting. The uh, the video side of it is taken care of through Memory Moments Media, and and then we're in the hands of um, what happens in the ground. Yes, and so they're unable to uh, control the 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 music uh, that that is being played at the ground, which is uh, causing issues for the uh, 
for the live stream. That's why these... Well, the, the player's now been removed. <coughs> Mike, the game's, the game's back on now. Yeah, so. that was uh, uh, Sam Moore, the number nine for for the uh, for the Blues, who's come off the field. Barrel have it on halfway, just to the eastern side of centre field. They keep going to that side. There's Fitz Sage, who I'm sure has played first grade around the traps. I'm sure he's had time at Mittigong in recent years. I mean, he played for Scarborough Fair too. <laughs> yes. Along with his uh, brothers, Parsley and Time. Yes, and his, and his sister, sister Rosemary. That's the one. Can't she forget. played in their ladies' league team. She side. was in the ladies' side, thank you. Now the kick on the last, if you're not sure what we're talking about. Charge down and he's called he's a ruled knock. a knock on from Barrel, so I can only assume that. Barrel as... put the kick through. Warragamba charged it down, so it must have been the barrel player must have dropped it as he was trying to pick it up. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Todd Fairburn tried to pick it up and dropped it in the process. Yeah, because as I said, it was a charge down to the Warwick Amber side. I don't think the charge down was the issue. No, I think it was, no, it I think was, it was after that. Yeah, I think it was from the rebound of the charge down that uh, the barrel side um, lost control of the ball. 6.45 remaining first half, 12-2. Warwick Amber leads it for Kip McGrath, Norellan and Campbelltown. And they're on the attack once again. Bryce Lowther, 33 metres out from the line. Back to the right-hand side they come. The Wombat, Shane Matthews inside the 30. Good run from Shane Matthews. He's a, he's a solid lad as well, the centre. We'll play it 24 metres out to centre field. Northern end of, uh, southern end of the ground. Back to the right-hand side. Presdy out the back for Wallace. Turns it on the inside. Finds his teammate there in the form of Reed. Reed plays at 11 metres out from the line. Back they come to the left-hand side. Presdy through the hands. Finds Blair up the middle. Stephen Blair, nine metres out. That's a good run on the last. He'll play it now. Back to the right-hand side. They'll go to the barrel defensive right. Partington, Partington. Can he get it down? Did he get it down? Referee says no. Back to the 20 for a seven tackle set. It remains 12-2. Warragamba, five and a half to the break for Kip McGrath, Ellen and Campbelltown. Yeah, I think Barrel dodged the bullet then. There was a good um, lead-up play by the Warragamba side, and it was just a uh, good defence there on the try line. So, in fact, it's actually a turnover on the last. Yeah, and the time, um, I think it's a timeout. There's an injured um, Warwick Amber player no, there. So, yeah, the now referee's just called time off now. The two trainers are um, running out onto the field. We might still 30 seconds while we have the opportunity here on Group 6 League Live and let you know about how you can be part of the team in 2020. And we thank all our sponsors for their support in 2019. We'd love to have you and them back in the new year. So if you're interested, get in touch with us, as you heard, via MacArthurSportsRadio.com. You can email us as well if you'd like to get in touch during the week. We haven't missed any play. 5-21 remaining in the first half. 12-2, Warragamba leads it 
for Kip McGrath, Norellan and Campbelltown. Yeah, the injured players now being replaced, Mike. So the I think that's uh, Partington, on. who's injured and coming on is... And Max Dudley. That's the one. I'm just having a look at my list to make sure it all... Well, that's what we've got. It. That's what I've got on the program anyway. Yeah, I'm just working off the official one, and that is correct. So, so Whiteman's called time back on now. Okay, so we're underway. Last five minutes of the first half. And the scoreboard is working, so it's come back on as well. So Yes, no drama is there, thankfully. We had a few issues earlier in the day, but it's uh, behaving itself at the moment. Five minutes left, it shows for Kip McGrath, Norellan and Campbelltown. Warragamba 12, Barrel 2 in the Shield Grand Final. Mike Sheen and Craig Davis with you this evening from Campbelltown Stadium as the lights take effect. Barrel to the outside, got the ball away. Carter Reeves puts the ears back, cuts back on the inside, dancing down the western touchline. Inside the 30, he's pulled down 27 metres out. Good work from Barrel then. Franco into dummy half, gives it off to the right-hand side, had a runner there, that's the last tackle. 20 metres out, and they get the penalty. Tom Marshall wins it for the Blues. Penalty count 5-4 for Osskilled. And most of those penalties have come late in the tackle count. They certainly have. As we see the Blues on the attack once again. Going to take the tap and go to the right-hand side. There's Fairburn for Fett Sage. He'll play it 11 metres out from the line. 22 in from touch. Eastern side of the ground is Mark Williams. Williams fends off one, still going the big man, gets the ball away, found Sage on the outside. He found a runner, in fact, only two metres out. What can they do here? The Blues back to the left-hand side. Now it's Sage up the middle. He's driven down five metres out, three of them there to stop him. On the Pembroke Road side of the ground, Fairburn first receiver. Puts it through the hands. Dudley, Dudley do right, not this time. Good defence from Warragamba. They lifted him but put him down safely. He'll play it on the last. Five metres out, they go to the short side. Fairburn, little grubber kick was aimed for the in goal but snapped up by Warragamba. In fact, I think Barrel have it. I think Barrel have it. What's the referee going to rule here? Uh, Whiteman's in the defensive line of the barrel side, so Warragam has come up with the ball. Okay, they got lucky there, the Wombats. I thought Fairburn had done enough, but a penalty goes to the Wombats. Mark is not being square. He's, he has blown the whistle a bit this evening, Mr. Whiteman. Ten penalties in the opening 30 minutes of, or nearly 35 minutes of rugby league. Most of them have been warranted. But still, 10 penalties in under 35 minutes of rugby league. That's a lot of a lot of stoppages. Warragamba from the restart. 26 metres out. 10 in western side. Sloppy play the ball. Referee says play on. Presdy through the hands. Skibberus takes it forward. Over the... In fact, that's uh, Blair taking it forward over the 30. Back to the right-hand side they come once again. There's a good run from the other front rower in uh, Jared Head over the 40. He'll play it eight short of halfway. Now Presdy with the kick. On the, I don't think that was the last tackle. I think that might have been tackle four. They let that one bounce. Barrel, Tom Atreid had that covered. Wheels around back to the open side left. It runs into a wall of sky blue and white led by Wallace and... Not Gromit, but Matthews. They work it upfield. That's a good run upfield from War from Barrel. Up over the 30. They're 14 short of halfway. Out of dummy half, there's uh, Nick Franco. Has played dummy half, playing on the wing tonight. Just short of the halfway line. That's a good run. And the ball out the back. Second phase ball. That's come off the leg. Referee says no. Just a slight knock on. Just a slight knock on from the Blues there. Lucky it was because he threw the pass forward to a player in an offside position. So luckily the referee pulled him up for the knock on because it could have been a penalty to um, Warragamba. And he looks like he's having a stern talk to uh, uh, Todd Fairburn from Barrel. Gave him the right old, uh, uh, right old lecture there. And I think the Barrel players seem to be blowing up with every time that Whiteman blows a penalty and I think he's just had enough of it instead of Fairburn. Look, tell your players to... Um, well, he's not the captain. Quiet. Actually, Mark Williams is the captain. 
So I think he's been told. Or maybe it. Fairburn's doing the the mouthing off. Yeah, I think that might be the case. And uh, he's told Mark Williams, control your halfback or I will, and you won't like what I do. As we see Warry Gamba to the left-hand side, there's Murphy with it. 32 metres out, clock showing 25 seconds first half. Back to the right-hand side they come again. Now Presdy has it, gives it off to Jared Head. Trying to work his way through the line. Williams over the top along with one other. They pull into ground. 23 metres out. That was Ash Carlon in the defensive line. Now it's Blair. Good run from Stephen Blair. Selma's husband pops it out the back and wins the penalty. And there's a little bit of... Well, it was almost about to break out into something. There's the siren in the background for halftime. Warragamba still has the penalty, so... Um... They're taking the shot for two mics, so just before yeah, they... that'd be a smart play on the stroke of well, half time. The, the hood has already gone, so there's no point trying to do anything. Take the two points, that gives them a, they'll give them a 14 2 lead, and that means Barrel's got to score at least two converted tries to get back into the game, and a third one to uh, actually win the or lead the game. So, this will be the final play of the first 35 minutes. Warragamba, two tries to the good. They went to Partington and Horn. And Smith has added both conversions. He's two from two this afternoon. Can he make it three out of three with the boot? This is probably his uh, toughest kick of the three, Mike. Certainly. The other two were close to the pace, where this one's a little bit further out. He'd be about 24 metres out and 15 in from touch on the western side. Ground almost completely bathed in shadow now few pockets of sunlight kick is up and over it's a lovely kick from jake smith he's got three from three on half time and it's 14-2 warragamba leads it at the break this is group six league live grand final day we'll be back with more in a moment